And the reason why we can be successful is because we are born again. Once you're born again, once you're born of the Spirit of God, you take hold of your life. Your whole life is about stewardship. Your whole life is about stewardship. And what is stewardship? Stewardship is knowing the will of God, knowing the word of God, knowing your Bible, and steer your life according to what is written. It is written. It is written that Jesus bore my sickness. It is written that Jesus took my sickness. It is written that Jesus bore my pain. So I'm steering my life in this direction. I'm steering my life in this course. And I do not accept the attack of sickness and disease. I do not, I do not, accept, I do not accept the voices of the enemy that come to intimidate me and threaten me. And try to make me to agree with him and believe in him. That's how you steer your life in the course of success. And that's what a Christian life is like. Amen. So you know very clearly where you're going. I know where I'm going. I know I'm going to heaven. I know that I'm walking in this shining path. Amen. And I know who is going with me. The Holy Spirit is going with me. I'm not alone in this. Amen. The Holy Spirit is my counselor. He is my helper. He is my strengthener. Amen. I do not doubt it. There is no shadow of turning with our God. My God has loved me. He has accepted me unconditionally. He has a plan for my life. He has a destiny for my life. I'm not changed by how people uh, treat me. I'm not changed by what the situation, how it uh, happens to be. I'm not changed by the, the noises around me. I'm not changed by the media. I'm not changed by the behavior of the crowd. Amen. I'm faithful. I'm faithful to the cause that God has set for me. Amen. And to do that, to do that, we must have a very successful prayer life. We must have a very successful prayer life. Because what is prayer? Prayer is believing with your heart and speaking with your mouth. Now to the natural man, we think that your power comes from your ability, your power comes from your intelligence, and some people believe that your power comes from your finances. But as far as the Word of God is concerned, as far as the power of the Spirit is concerned, your power comes from your heart. What do you believe? Do you, re do you really believe that God has marked you out for success? Do you really believe that you are born again? Do you believe that there is power in redemption? Do you really believe in the reality of redemption? Do you really believe in the Bible? Do you take time to study the Bible? Do you rightly divide the word of truth? Do you renew your mind with the Bible? What do you really believe? Amen. So the power is in your faith. Whatever you believe. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh. Amen. That's how you change your life. That's how you change your situations and circumstances. God created the whole universe with his word, with his mouth. And he spoke very explicitly in the book of Proverbs, life and death is in the power of your tongue. Amen. It's in your tongue. And with your tongue, you can change your thoughts. With your tongue, you can change your emotions. With your tongue, you can change your values. With your tongue, you can change your personality. With your tongue, you can change your situation. With your tongue, you can change the condition of your physical body. If you can adopt the tongue of the Holy Spirit, the tongue that speaks the truth, Amen. Hallelujah. And stop crowning an idle tongue that is not tamed, that is loose to speak whatever you feel like to say. We are called the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Disciples are the disciplined ones. How do we arrive at that? How do we arrive at that excellence in Christ? That's all to do with prayer. That's all to do with prayer. What is prayer? A lot of people, they think 
To pray means to ask God, no, 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 no. It's more than that. It's greater than that. It's deeper than that. What is prayer? There are many kinds of prayer. And tonight we want to focus on prayers that build you up. Prayers that affirm you. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember it is written in the book of Jude, verse 20, Build yourself up, right? On your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Now I want to focus your attention on the first part of that scripture. Build yourself up. Now if God tells us to build ourselves up, that means we need to be built up. We need to be built up. We need to be built up. Once you are born again, how did we get born again? When you got born again, there was a light that came to you. There was an awakening that came to you. There was the power of God that came into you. It's like for the split of a second, you realized that you were a sinner. You realized that you needed God. You realized that you needed help. And you got so excited that God had come into your life. And then you could get help. You could get changed. That's how you got born again. But that was only in the split of a second. And you need to continue to build yourself up. Because there are so many forces coming against you. There are so many forces coming against this house. You are called the house of God. The word of God says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So this house needs to be built. This house needs to be built, needs to be built so that it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger in the Lord. So that it is rooted, so that it is grounded, so that no matter when the storms come, when the rain came, when the flood came, this house is strong. It cannot be blown away. Because the enemy will do all that he can to shake you, to discourage you, to distract you, to confuse you, to belittle you. When I say you, I'm talking about the born again spirit. There are many Christians, even though they are born again, but they live a soulish life. What do I mean by soulish life? A life that's based on their emotions, their carnal emotions. A life that's based on their reactions to what's happening around them. Like what I said last Sunday, a person who is lived dictated by the hurt that he feels, the bad memories that he had in the past, forever dictated, controlled by the people around them, by how he or she was treated by the people around them. That's not the will of God for our lives. We are not created to be passive. We are created to be in charge. We are created to be proactive. And the only way that we can arrive at that, the only way that we can do that, is to take the word of God and build it into our spirit. Take the word of God, build it into our spirit. Take the word of God, build it into our spirit. Take the word of God, build it and build it and build it into ourselves. Amen. If you look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Once you are born again, you should never live like as if you had never been born again. It's very important that you pray by the Bible. Don't pray by however you feel. Don't pray by whatever comes to your mind. It's very important that you get into scriptural prayers. A lot of times you may not know what, I, what do I say? What is prayer? How should I say? What do I say? Once you lay hold of the principles not that I'm teaching you now, you would be able to pray anytime. You don't need to wait for an emotion or a high to start praying. All you have to do is you get the word of God and then there will be a sharp double-edged sword coming out of your mouth. Amen. Prayers that are very important are prayers that build you up and prayers that bind the enemy. Amen. Very important. Two elements in our lives. One, the number one person that is very important in your life that determines your failure or success is yourself. The person who determines whether you are a failure or whether you are a success is yourself. 
If you believe that you are a success in Christ, if you believe in the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, there is no room for failure. No room for failure. I don't care how people treat you. Amen. Because you are never big enough to change the word of God. Amen. Your feelings cannot change the word of God. You may feel like you are a failure. But if you are determined to live by the word in spite of how your carnal feelings tell you, you will be a success. Amen. And the next important element in your life would be the devils. The key is that the devils are not running your life, you are running theirs. The Bible says a sharp double-edged sword. What is a double-edged sword? One side of the sword is to exalt God, another side of the sword is to bind the devil. A Christian that doesn't know how to fight demons will never succeed in his or her life. You must wake up to the reality of demons. Demons are very real and they are universal. And demons specializing, what do they specialize in? They specialize in voices. They talk to you. They talk to your soul. They can talk in the voice that deceives you. They can talk in the voice that belittles you. They can talk in the voice that sucks all the courage out of you. They can talk in the voice that belittles you so that there is hardly any self-worth left in you. Those are demons. And we should never play game with them. We should recognize who they are and kick them out right away. Too many Christians entertain the voice of demons in their souls. You should never entertain the voice of demons in your soul. Any negative voice is not from God, it's from the devil. The Holy Spirit does not talk in a condemning voice. The Holy Spirit does not talk in an accusing voice. The Holy Spirit convicts, but the Holy Spirit will never cut your self-worth. The Holy Spirit will never pull you down. He convicts to save. He convicts to change. There's a big difference. Amen. Amen. So we need to know our God. How? Through his word. It's very important that we know our self-worth in Christ Jesus. The Bible says stop living like a mere man. Don't think of yourself as an ordinary normal human being. Because a normal ordinary human being lives by a sinful nature. You have to stop believing in that sinful nature because whatever you believe in will happen for you. So if you keep believing in that sinful nature and you keep making excuses for yourself to manifest that sinful nature, that's what you will be, a sinner. And you will forever live in that remorse and guilt and condemnation and your life will be made up of nothing but junk until the day you die, even though you have been born again. That's very pathetic. Why? Because that person has been defeated by the devil. Deceived and defeated. So we have to understand and to rightly discern the voice of the devil from the voice of God. Amen. So I'm giving you a lesson today to start with so that you start building yourself up first. Okay? Number one thing, you must build yourself how do we do that? Understand that you don't live in the Old Testament. How many of you have heard that psalm? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yeah? Do you know that prayer of David has been answered? That prayer of David has been answered. The prophecy that was spoken by Ezekiel What's that prophecy? God said, I will put in you a new spirit and I will put in you a new heart. A new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. When did that happen? Let me ask you. That prophecy has been fulfilled. When? When was it fulfilled? On the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of a born again believer. Amen? When born again, when that whole born again spiritual miracle has been given to mankind. 
That miracle has been given to us. The minute we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, what happened? Then God creates in us a clean heart and renew our right spirit within us. And he puts his Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So it is not scriptural for a born again believer to pray that prayer. That's why the word of God says that you have to rightly divide the word of truth. You have to apply the right truth for the right dispensation for the right people. Amen. So when you read especially the Old Testament, when you read the Psalms, you have to understand very, very clearly which are the Psalms that have been fulfilled, which are the Psalms have been uh, the prayers and the Psalms that have been answered. So you stop looking at yourself as a sinner. You stop looking at yourself as an Old Testament sinner. Amen. You have to look at yourself as a born again, spirit filled, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized believer. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your own perception is very important. How you see yourself is very important. That's why I put in there identification. You need to identify yourself. You need to know your identity. Who you are. Who am I? I'm not the crowd. I'm not one of the crowds following Jesus. I'm not one of the bystanders looking at Jesus working his miracles. No. No, I'm not. I'm not in the Old Testament. I don't, I don't identify myself with the rebellious ones. No, you are not. You are a born again, spirit filled, Holy Ghost baptized believer. And that's what you need to build and that's what you need to reinforce all the time. Can we have an amen? Amen. So if you look at Romans chapter, one, ch chapter 5 verse 1, Romans 5 1. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do I pray then? Use this scripture, lift up your hands and say, I thank you Lord that I have been justified by faith. I thank you, Lord, that I have peace now with you through Jesus Christ, my Lord. My peace does not come from myself. My peace does not come from whether I've done right, whether I've done good. My peace comes from justification. My peace comes from the Lord. The fact that I have been justified, the fact that I've been made anew, Hallelujah. Now I have the shalom, the peace of God. What do you do? You're using the scriptures and you're speaking it to yourself. How do you build yourself? Put the scriptures. How? Through your eyes and through your mouth into your heart. Through your eyes, through your mouth into your heart. Through your eyes, through your mouth into your heart. And say, I'm justified by faith. I'm justified by faith. I'm justified by faith. What is happening? You become very strong and secure. You don't tremble, you don't shake when the situation is not favorable. You don't become insecure when people don't treat you right. You don't waver from the word when things are tough. Why? Because you've built yourself in the word. Amen. If you look at verse 2, by whom we also have access, how? Access by faith. A lot of people, they think that, um, you know, you cannot approach God. Oh, you can never approach God, not until he approves you. So they're forever working on their approval. I'm not approved by God yet. My prayer is not good enough yet. My life is not good enough yet. So forever, they live in that spirit of rejection. That God is rejecting them. And they are rejected by God and rejected by people. Why? Because to begin with they have rejected themselves. Please understand that no one can reject you but yourself. But if you reject yourself, surely you'll live a life of rejection. It's a terrible spirit. It's a spirit that talks to you all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're rejected. No one cares about you. No one likes you. God is not hearing your prayer. You're not good enough. Never be good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a devil talking. Take him off. Declare, I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm loved. I'm accepted. I'm the apple of his eyes. 
Amen. I'm cherished, highly favored. God loves me. Amen. Raise your hands, believe with your heart, and confess with your mouth. And what prayer is this? This is called the prayer of affirmation. If you could just affirm yourself, then you don't need to wait for others to affirm you constantly. How many people that we know, they're waiting to be affirmed all the time. And as a result, they're always, insecure, they're always living in insecurity. Looking for their boyfriends to, to affirm them, husbands to confirm them, pastors to approve them, God to say them they're all right. Looking for signs and wonders and miracles and have a dream and say, Oh, God talks to me, I'm so happy. We shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't be like that. We should know God very well. You know Him as you are known. As you build the Word of God, you become very sure. You become very established. By whom also we have access by faith. How do we come to God? How do we come to God? How? The Bible tells us by? Somebody tell me by? By? Faith. Is it by good works? No. Is it by your charming personality? No. Is it by your prayer and fasting? No. How do we approach God? By faith. That means the minute I pray, I know, I know that God is here listening to me. The minute I pray, I know, I know the windows are opened. The minute I pray, I know and I'm sure that my works are powerful and they are working and they are working and they are working. And that's why it's very important for you to believe in what you say. If you don't believe in what you say, it's very hard for your prayers to work. You have to know that your words have power. You have to understand that words have power. Amen. It's the same thing when you talk to your kids. You have to believe that when you talk to your kids, they listen to you. But if you don't even believe that when you talk to your kids, they listen to you, why would your kids believe that, you know, they need to listen to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Confidence is a very important thing. Don't think that it's pride. It's not pride. It's confidence. God has created us with confidence. Amen. You need to believe that you are a Christian and Christ is in you, the hope of glory. There is intrinsic value in you. There is intrinsic goodness in you. And you value that. And you cherish that. And you live out of that. And you talk out of that. And you listen out of that. You see out of that. There is intrinsic value and intrinsic goodness in you. And it overflows from your innermost being by the words that you say to change the deserts into living water and dry ground into water springs. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says that we have access by faith into this grace. So when we talk about prayer, we're not talking about whether you deserve it or not. When we talk about prayer, we're talking about faith, we're talking about grace. F prayer has a lot to do with faith and grace. We are talking about faith and grace. We are talking about the prayers of faith, the prayers of grace. Can we have an amen? Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace and when you're in faith when you're in grace you don't magnify yourself when you're in faith when you're in grace whom do you magnify the Lord that's why David said come and magnify the Lord with me so when you're in prayer you magnify the Lord what he has done what he's going to do you you get out of your self-consciousness and you get into Christ consciousness can we have an amen Amen. So your prayer, your prayer is carrying you, your prayer is carrying you out of yourself into the realm of the Spirit, into the power of God, into the authority of Jesus Christ. That's why after you've prayed, you get so excited. You're charged and you're full of victory and you know that your prayers are happening and working. Can we have an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So it's the faith and the grace. Amen. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Your prayer is charged with hope and glory. Prayers that work are prayers that are charged with hope and glory. 
Whatever prayer you say, charge it with hope and glory. Charge your life with hope and glory. Amen. Keep saying, my future is good. My future is in the Lord. My future is good. My kids, they have a good future. I have a wonderful future. I share the future of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't live out of your soul. Your soul is full of insecurity, full of doubts, full of hurts, full of griefs, full of bad memory, full of frustration. Don't live out of your soul. Your soul is full of rubbish. Live out of your spirit. Let your spirit be in charge. You are a spirit and you're in charge. You tell yourself how to feel. Even when your tears running down your cheek, I say I'm victorious in Christ Jesus. I'm victorious in Christ Jesus. My future is good. My future is good. I tell you what, your words of confession, your words of faith will change your emotions. From destructive and ugly emotions into holy emotions. Victorious emotions. Amen. How many of you have seen people living in depression? How many of you have seen people living in depression? Depression is from the pit of hell. What is depression? Depression is having the demons, you know, oppressing you, putting pressure on you and harassing you and tormenting you all the time with negativity and gloom and doom. You cannot see light. Everything that you see is dark and negative and fearful it has no hope in it it has no joy in it. it has no glory in it that's terrible that's terrible Christians we don't live a depressed life why because Christ is in us the hope of glory what is the hope of glory that means my hope is glorious <laughs> That is the hope of glory. That means my hope is glorious. And the word of God says that those who hope in the Lord will never fail. Will never be disappointed. There is a hope that has no disappointment. Where is that hope? In Christ. Your hope in Christ will never be disappointed. Your hope in Christ will never, never be disappointed. And what do you do? You keep believing it. You keep speaking it. You keep believing it. You keep speaking it. How do I know that my prayers are successful? Number one, I've changed myself. At first, I started with, I'm just saying it. You know, I'm just saying it. Because Pastor Dora has said I should say it. So I'm just saying it. Because I think I better say it. So that's how I start. But then as I say it, faith cometh by hearing. As I say it, I hear it. As I say it, I hear it. And I keep hearing it. And I keep hearing it. And what happened? My mind is being changed. My mind is being changed. My emotions also is changed. And I become persuaded, 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 persuaded until I become fully persuaded. Oh yeah, that's not that hard. I believe it. And then you start walking in miracles. That's how I started walking in divine health. I've been living like this for 20 years. You know, anything happened in my leg, you know, hurting or whatever, a cramp. You know, I just lay hand. I just believe I'm healed. Jesus bore my sickness. Devils, go. Your foul spirit of pain and infirmity, leave. And I have miracles all the time. All the time. All the time. Amen. It works. Can we have an amen? Amen. So you have to put it into place and keep doing it and keep doing it. Keep doing it. The word of God says, Greg is the company that publishes the gospel, the good news. What is the good news? The good news is what that is something that will change the bad news. <laughs> the reason why it's good because it changes the bad. <laughs> That's why it's good. So you better believe the good to change the bad. Don't believe the bad and disregard the good. A lot of time Christians live like that. They believe the bad, believe the bad so strongly. The good is like, it's just something that you do in church. No, believe the good to change the bad. Believe the good to change the bad. How do you do that? With your heart and your mouth, with the heart and your mouth, with the heart and your mouth. And you keep doing that, and you keep doing that, and you keep doing that. I tell you, God is faithful. What did Jesus say? Jesus said to the woman, because of her importunity. 
because of her tenacity, because of her perseverance. You know, you will be tested whether you really believe in what you say. You will find out for yourself, do you really believe this thing called the Bible? Do you really believe it? Do you really believe the promises? Or do you believe in your muscle? Do you believe in your mind? Do you believe in your intelligence? You will be, you will be sorely tested. Just for you to find out. Amen. And the key is that I'm determined to find out that I am a genuine believer. That's what you should say about yourself. Say to yourself, I'm a genuine believer. I am a believer. I believe through and through. I believe in every precious promise of the Bible. I believe my God loves me. I believe that God manifests his miracles for me. I believe that signs and wonders follow me all the days of my life. I believe the goodness of the Lord follows me all the days of my life. I believe that God loves me. God is leading me. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how we do it. Believing with your heart. Confessing with your mouth. Pick up your Bible, the sword of the Spirit, and start speaking. What is this? It's called the prayer of affirmation. Prayer of affirmation to build yourself up, to affirm yourself, to establish your identity in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you to look at um, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. The Bible says when we come to God in prayer, what should our attitude be? Should it be an attitude of inferiority? Yes or no? No. Should it be an attitude of uh, doubt and unbelief? No. What should the attitude be? It's an attitude of boldness. 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 That means I come as I am. I am a believer. God has made me a believer. God has given me the grace to be a believer. And so I come with the grace of God. I come believing in the grace of God. I come believing in the works of Jesus Christ. I come believing in the power of the blood of Jesus. That's who I am. That's where I live. Can I have an amen? That's how you come, boldly. Whatever you magnify, you will become. Whatever you magnify, you will become. If you spend all your time thinking about your weakness, if you think all the, all the time about your bad habits, about your past mistakes, about all your sin, what you do is you're just recycling the junk. You're just recycling the junk. That's why the word of God says, cast it into the sea of forgetfulness and remember it no more. Our consciousness is very important. Now this kind of prayer that I'm teaching you to pray will stir up your Christ consciousness. Amen. Once you are born again, don't see yourself as a sinner. Don't see yourself living in the junk. Once you are born again, see yourself as a Christian. See yourself as a believer. See yourself as a saint. See yourself living in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. See yourself living by the grace of God. Can we have an amen? And continue to build that up and magnify that. Amen. How do you do it? Okay, let's look at Psalm 8 verse... Uh, Okay, I want you to look at uh, Psalm 1. Go to your Bible. Go to Psalm 1 with me. Amen. Go to Psalm 1. I want to, you to look at the Bible. And uh, I want to teach you how to pray with your Bible tonight. Go to Psalm 1. A lot of Christians don't know how to pray. They wait till they feel something. They wait till they get something. Open your Bible. The minute you open your Bible, you know how to pray. So can you open uh, to Psalm 1 with me? Okay, now Psalm 1 starts with, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So how do you pray? Now we're talking about praying the prayer of affirmation. We're talking about praying the prayer that build up your identity in Christ. We're talking about praying the prayer that stirred up your Christ consciousness. So you pray like that. I thank you Lord that I'm blessed. I thank you, Lord, your word says that I'm blessed. Because I do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, I do not stand in the way of sinners, and I do not sit in the seat of the scornful. 
I say to myself that I am a Christian. I love godliness, I love virtues, and I hate evil. I'm separated from evil. I'm separated unto God. I belong to the land of Goshen. I belong to the body of Christ. I do not sit in the counsel of the wicked. I do not sit in the conversation of the ungodly. I'm separated unto God. I'm separated for His blessings to come to me. I'm separated to fulfill His assignments for my life. I'm separated to fulfill His calling, His destiny for my life. You use this and you pray. What is prayer? Believing with your heart, confessing with your mouth. You are confessing what God has promised. You are confessing what God says He will bless you. You are confessing that I am doing what God says I should do. I'm doing what God says I should do. I'm being what God says I should be. Do, do you get this? So you don't have to wait till a feeling comes to pray. Amen? And then you say, verse 2, and then you pray like this. My delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do I meditate day and night. What are you doing? You're building your Christian character. You are telling yourself, I delight in the law of the Lord. I love God's word. That's how I started. When I became a Christian, I did not have any of the famous speakers to teach me. I was born again in Bangkok, Thailand. And the Holy Ghost taught me to use the color pencils and highlight my scriptures. And then he taught me. He said, pray from the word. Pray like that. Because the one thing after I got born again was, Lord, how to pray? Because I had been a Catholic for a long time before I got born again. And we always pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, we just pray like that and amen. <laughs> I had no idea how to pray. You know, we had those prayer books. But then the Holy Spirit said, pray from the word. Pray with the word. Pray with the word. And you know, the word inspires you to pray. The word gives you prayer. So when you pray like this, Lord, my delight is in your law. Oh, how good. Lord, my delight is in your word. And in your word do I meditate day and night. Lord, I love your word. I love your word. Your word is so good. Your word is like fresh manner to me. Lord, your word is more pleasant to me than honey and the honeycomb. Oh, Lord, I love your word. Your word has healed me so many times. Your word has rescued me so many times. Your word has delivered me from trouble so many times. Your word has prepared my way. Lord, your word is a light unto my, what a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Lord, I walk in your word, Father God. I walk in the cause of your word. Amen. What are you doing? You're building your life. Amen. What are the building blocks? The word of God, the scriptures. And what's more, you're being inspired by the word. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he's inspiring you. Amen. Your mind is receiving spiritual power. Your emotions is receiving the power of holiness. Amen. And without you knowing it, the word is ordering your course. And you don't, you, you're not even conscious, you know. I have to do good. I have to be a saint. I have to do good. You don't, you're not even conscious of that. Because you've prayed like this, the word is building up your character. The word is building up your personality. The word is building up your value. And you just flow like that without even conscious that oh, I have to be a good Christian. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The word, the song that we sing, it has the lie, it has the power to change you. The power of holiness is in the word. It's not in our willpower, not in our flesh. The power of victory is in the word. Amen? And when you have the word in you, I tell you, devils have to run from you. Amen. And let's look at verse 3. And you lay hold of this promise and say, Yes, Lord. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water and I bring forth your fruit in your season. My leaf also will not wither. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. You are declaring the word. It has become your rhema because you are not just reciting it. It means something to you. 
is stirring up in you holy emotions. It's giving you excitement in your spirit. It has become real to you. Now, for the first time in your life, you can see, whoa, I can prosper. It's the will of God for me to prosper. I am like a tree planted by the living water. Glory be to God. Amen. And what's more, you can use these scriptures and pray for your children. I thank you, Lord, that my children, their delight is in your word. My kids, they delight in your word. My husband, he delights in your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray over the people around you with the word of God. Amen. Say, Lord, it is your will that my husband delights in your word. And I claim your will for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And say that all of, all of us, as for me and my house, we all serve the Lord and we are bearing fruit in our lives. Every one of my children bears fruit. Glory be to God. Amen. And whatever we do shall prosper. And you speak to your hands and say, whatever you do prospers. Amen. Speak to yourself, whatever you do, prospers. And then you see yourself, you see yourself prospering, prospering. Amen. Why? In the will of God. It is the will of God for us to prosper. It is written, whatever we do shall prosper. And then you have the confidence. Where do you get your confidence from? From the word. Where do you get your faith from? From the word. And you notice that you are, what's happening? You're putting off the old man and you're putting on the new man. You're putting off the self-consciousness and you're putting on the Christ consciousness. That's why when the Apostle Paul, he said, it's no longer I that live, but Jesus who is living in me. And you can say the same thing. It is no longer I that live. I don't focus on my thoughts, my presumptions, my opinions, my ideas, my feelings, my situation. No. No. It's what is written. What is written. What is written. Who I am in Christ Jesus. The promises of God for my life. Hallelujah. And what happened? You find yourself so lighthearted. It's so lighthearted. Glory be to God because I'm living in the word. I'm walking in it. Amen. I become so lighthearted. Amen. And when I look at people, I don't, I don't focus on their mistakes anymore. Why? Because I don't focus on my mistakes either. Because as you treat yourself, that's how you treat others. If you're being very harsh with yourself, you'll be very harsh with others. If you're always carrying guilt and remorse and condemnation and you can't even lift up your heads, you won't have a good life with the people around you. The way that you are will be the way that you are when you're with others. So if you are successful in and of yourself, you will be successful with others, including your family, your workplace, whatever you do. Can we have an amen? That's the best way to live, isn't it? That's the best way to live. That's the way that God has ordained for our life to live. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I ask you to go to Psalm 91? Go to Psalm 91. Amen. Use Psalm 91. You know, I'm just giving you some examples. How many of you want to live the life of Jesus, not your life? Amen. That's how you live the life of Jesus. Putting his thoughts in your mind. Putting his words in your mouth. Putting his emotions in your soul. Because your soul is made up of your thoughts, your emotions, and your will. So you're putting the will of God in you. You're putting the thoughts of God in you. You're putting the emotions of God in you. And you're being transformed, 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 transformed. And even without knowing it, when the enemy comes against you, you know your, your in Christ creature, your catesis rises up. <gasps> Hallelujah. And the demons, who is that? Who is that? better run from him. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ha hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 91. Amen. How many of you have been on stage before? Like do a speech or sing a song? How many of you know that when you're on stage, the best way not to have stage fright is to forget yourself? You, are you aware of that? If you forget about yourself, you will perform very well. But if you are very conscious of yourself, you'll be shaking. You'll be very cautious. Am I okay? Am I alright? <laughs> you know what I'm doing? Being self-conscious is the worst way to live. 
the best way to live is being Christ conscious. The best way to live is being Christ conscious. Amen. So look at Psalm 91 is being Psalm 91, you build it in yourself and you become very Christ conscious. So when you use this psalm, you pray like this. You pray, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Pray like that. Amen. What do you do? You claim that position. You say, but I'm not yet, you know, I'm not living in the secret place of the Most High. In fact, I'm living in the world most of the time. That's why you need to confess it. <laughs> you have to confess it before you can possess it. You get it? You have to confess it so you can possess it. If you don't confess it, you'll never possess it. If you think yourself a failure, you will end up a failure. If you think yourself a failure, you talk a failure, you'll end up being a failure. God's way is that you declare it. The word of God says you declare the end from the beginning. So from the very beginning, I'm like an appeal. <laughs> you know, I'm very childish, I'm very carnal, I'm very self-conscious. But then I declare, I declare that I'm strong in the Lord. I'm, de I'm declaring that my future is good in God. I'm declaring my maturity in Christ. I'm declaring that I'm dedicated to God. I'm committed to God. I'm devoted to God. I'm declaring that. So what do I do? As I declare, it's like you have a road map in front of you. You declare your destination and you're driving. How many of you know that when you look at your car will always go to where you're looking at. Isn't that right? Your vision will what? Your vision will determine your direction. Your vision will determine your direction. Your vision will direct you. So you see, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As you do that, you steer your course in that direction. Amen. You think I enjoy going to China all the time? No, I don't. My flesh, no. It's a lot more comfortable here. But I declare, I'm faithful. I'm faithful to you, Lord. It has nothing to do with how I feel. I'm faithful to your assignment. I'm faithful to your assignment. I love the people that you have assigned me to take care of. I'm faithful to you. As I declare what happened, my feelings start to change. You know, my feelings start to talk to me. Yeah, it's good going to China. Yeah, you love them. Yeah, you miss them, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yes, Lord, I do. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Do you know what I'm saying? Feelings can change. Feelings go up and down. As you decide your vision and your destination, your feelings will conform. Amen? So don't play that false humility game and say that I'm a sinner, I'm no good, you know. No. You better declare who you want to be and then you will get there. Can we have an amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. So you pray like that. Say, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Mighty, the Almighty. Now I want to ask, how many of you love to hear people talk good about you? Lift up your hands. Yes. How many of you love to hear people talk bad about you all the time? No. That's the way that God has created us. So when we say these scriptures, what happened? We love the word. When you talk these scriptures into yourself, oh yes, I love it. Yes, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I feel so good about myself. Yes, I'm like that. Yes, I'm like that. God loves me. God appreciates me. Oh, God is so good. Yeah? Amen? And that's what you will be. And you fall in love with God. The reason why you fall in love with God is because God loves you so much. Amen? He loves you in spite of yourself. And by His love, we are changed. We are changed by His love. Why? Because His love draws the good from us. His love draws the good from us. Amen. How many of you would like to go to a church to have a preacher that keeps telling you you are a sinner? You need to be conscious of your sin. You need to know how many sins you have committed this week. You are not good enough for God. You need to fall. You need to bow down. 
You need to cry in repentance. And you hear that sermon every week. Would you like that? No. Why? You, because you'll be so crushed. You'll be so crushed. God is not the God who crushes us. He's the God who motivates us. Motivation is a very powerful word. And we have to... We have to use the same parenting towards our children. It's better to motivate them than to scold them. Because you want your children to look for what is good in them and excel. You don't want your children to keep thinking bad about them and grow up with an inferiority complex. Amen? Amen? Do you want your children to be confident? Yes. To think good about themselves? To carry themselves with confidence? Amen. Amen. So treat them like that. And treat yourself like that. How do you do it? You must spend time in the word. Putting the word of God in you. And you use verse 2. And say, I say of the Lord, Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my God. In you will I trust. I trust in you, God. I trust in you. I don't trust in the behavior of people. I don't trust in how people treat me. I don't trust in how people think of me. I don't trust in the virus. I don't trust in the world depression. I don't trust in the economic situation. In God, I trust. And keep building that, building that in your consciousness. Amen? And go to verse 3. And you say, surely, Lord, you will deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. Surely, Lord, you will deliver me. And when you pray like this, when you're in a difficult spot, when you're in a harsh, in a difficult situation, you'll hear the voice of God saying to you, surely I will deliver you. You will hear that. Amen. Because the word becomes so real, alive to you. Amen. And you declare that and you declare, verse 4, Surely, Lord, you will cover me with your feathers and under your wings I will trust. Your truth will be my shield and my buckler. Your shield is my protection. Your shield is my defense. Your truth is my shield. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And verse 5, speak to yourself, tell yourself, I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. I'm not a man of fear. I'm not a woman of fear. I rebuke timidity in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I don't entertain the spirit of fear. I do not receive the spirit of fear. Fear in all of its shape and form, anxieties, worries, uh, frustrations, in all of its ugly form and shape, leave my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm not afraid of disapproval. I'm not afraid of people rejecting me. You foul spirit of rejection. Get out of my life in Jesus' name. I'm confident in the Lord. I'm accepted in the beloved. Amen. I fear no evil. I fear no sickness and disease. I fear no accidents. You foul demon of accident. You're not allowed to engineer any accidents in my life. Leave in Jesus' name. You foul spirit of infirmity. You're not allowed to come up with any sickness in my body. You're not allowed to come up with any infirmity in my organs, in my body. Go in the name of Jesus. You're so confident. Why? Because you have the sword, the word of the word of God, the sword of the spirit in your hand. And with it, you just keep slaying Goliath. Amen. And you say, I lose the angels of God to encamp around me and came around my house. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I lose the angels of God and bring in God's future for my life. Bring in God's future for my children. God's future for my church. God's future for everybody that God has assigned me to minister to. Amen. So confident. How many many of you know this that when you pray like this, You don't have to worry about, don't know what to pray. You can pray like this for hours. And there's power. Because the word coming out of your heart, the word coming out of your mouth, there's power. You are changing what? You are changing your spiritual atmosphere. You are changing your spiritual atmosphere. 
Your spiritual atmosphere is very, very important. Some carry an atmosphere of failure. The world calls it pessimism. Have you ever met people that whatever they do just fail? It's like the minute they touch us, the minute they touch the plant, it will die. <laughs> it's called doomed. <laughs> Your spiritual atmosphere is very important. Ask yourself, what are the voices that are talking to you all the time? When you're quiet, what do you hear? Do you hear fear or do you hear faith? Do you hear success or do you hear inferiority? Ask yourself, what am I hearing? What are the spirits hovering over me, over my head? What's the devil telling me? I don't want devils to tell me what. I want the Holy Spirit to talk to me. Amen? To do that, you have to be very honest with yourself. Notice, pay attention to the voices of demons and cast them out. How many of you have heard Voices that talk bad about you and talk bad about people. Yeah. That, they, those voices are very real. The scripture said there are many voices in the world and there is not even one that has no significance. That means the voices have significance. Without knowing it, you subconsciously receive all the voices. For example, the voice that tells you how bad you are or how bad your spouse is, how bad your kids are, and you entertain them and you listen to them, and what happened? They build a stronghold in your mind. And that stronghold will start to operate and talk to you, and talk to you. Or if you believe in, if I eat pork, I'll get cancer. If I eat onion, I'll get sick. You know, there are so many doctrines and teachings in the world and you allow them to build a stronghold in your mind and what is the stronghold? The stronghold is the faith. Faith. Faith in what is bad. Faith in the negative. Faith in the operations of demons. Do you know what I'm talking about? So don't just stay passive and quiet and just keep listening and listening. No, the minute you hear a voice that does not agree with the word of God, you need to rebuke it and cast it out. Amen. If you hear a voice that tells you your sons are no good, they won't grow up to be a success, right away rebuke it in the name of Jesus. If you hear a voice that tells you your children don't love you anymore, rebuke it. Amen. You need to build that confidence, that strength, that security. Amen. It's very important. Amen. It's just that, you know, I'm giving you something good. I'm telling the parents, parents, it's very important that you command honor with your children. If your children always see you weak, they won't honor you. If your children notice that you're always wanting love from them, affirmation from them. I want my kids to tell me how good a mother I am. I want my kids to tell me how much they love me. I want my kids to tell me how much they appreciate me. I want my kids to tell me about this and this and this and that. And you build your confidence in your relationship with your kids. And you build your ups and downs on however your kids treat you. you are, you've set yourself up for failure. You can't. You have to build yourself strong so that your kids can see the strength in you. They can see God in you and they honor you and they'll come to you for strength and for counsel. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? How do I do that? How do I build up the anointing to be a leader? The anointing to be a parent? The anointing to be honored? Putting the word of God in me. Putting the word of God in me. Putting the word of God in me. I am what the word of God says I am. I can do what the word of God says I can do. Amen. The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. What is us Christians? The word in me. Living like a person. 
Amen. The word of God in this body living itself. Manifesting itself. Amen. And you will never arrive at that if you don't take time to put the word of God in you. Amen. What did David say? He said, your word have I put in my heart that I may not sin against you. What did Elizabeth say when the angel came to her? She said, be it unto me according to your word. Can you see that? Amen. Can you see the power of the word? Hallelujah. All right. Um, I want to finish with uh, Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Can you go there with me? I want you to look at verse 7 to verse 10 or to verse 11. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What does that mean? That means if your soul is full of fear, it's full of anger, full of hate, contempt, the word of God will change that. It works better than vitamins. And then the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Because the word of God is sure, it will stabilize you. The word of God will stabilize you and establish you. So that you will not be blown about by every wind of doctrine. Verse 8. The statues of the Lord are right. You no longer try to chase and find out what is right, what is wrong. The word of God will tell you in your heart what is right. Rejoicing the heart. The word of God will cause you to leap for joy. Because there's hope. Amen. And the commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The word of God will cause you to see what is good. And you want it good. And you gladly obey it because it's good. You gladly obey it because it's good. And then verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Amen. You want to worship God. The worship of the Lord sanctifies your emotions. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. I'm no longer saying my judgment is right or my husband's judgment is right or her judgment is right. No, I'm sticking to the judgment of God. Amen. So it, I'm true, I'm righteous. And then verse 10, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and in keeping them there is what? Great reward. We talk about prophetic people, being a prophetic people. We talk about prophetic prayer. If you follow this course, whatever comes to you in your future, whether it's positive or whether it's negative, you will know. If it's negative, the Lord by his word will warn you and protect you from that. If it's positive, the Lord will prepare you to lay hold of his rewards. Amen? You follow the course of the word, you will become a prophetic people and you will find yourself starting praying prophetic prayers that will point you to a great future. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you and thank you for tonight. We thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for, for the revelation tonight. Amen. Thank you for hungry hearts and thirsty souls. Amen. Father, we thank you for the practicality of the word. That your word builds the, the ways of our lives and, and your word builds our hearts and builds our lives, Father. The building blocks of your word. Amen. And Father, we declare that our future is built by your word. Amen. Hallelujah. For your word says that we are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that you have before ordained that we should walk in them. So Father, we declare that we are walking in your word, we are walking in your way, and our future is in you. You are our future. Amen. Hallelujah. There's no any other future. Our future is ordained by you and blessed by you. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen.